All right, welcome back to uh, Admin Tone Blog. Today I'm going to be trying something new. I'm going to record while I uh, set up a quote-unquote production Cassandra uh, cluster. So uh, hopefully it'll be fun and hopefully it'll go by quickly. Don't want to bore you too long, but in case we do, we got some awesome music that hopefully you two will let us play. Uh, so starting out, I'm going to be building three servers. Uh, these three servers are going to uh, going to be our, our Cassandra server. I want to use this for uh, big data. I want it to store lots and lots of data. So I want to make sure I have at least combined about uh, at least a terabyte of disk space. Um, in the end, what I'm going to be doing is taking my production logs from my website and uh, and also uh, Twitter references and such, uh, passing that to a pub sub uh, from a pub sub. I'm going to format that to to rows that I'm going to put in Cassandra for long term storage, so I can run SQL commands on it, do some big data stuff. It should be really cool. So uh, with that, we'll go ahead and uh, and uh, get started. I'll go ahead and uh, start building my servers. Here we got uh, we got my my server list here. So let's build the first one. We'll be going with about two eighteen oh four LTS. Notice we got three terabytes of storage there. A little bit more, probably about four. Uh, so let's make these let's make these guys pretty pretty beefy. So we'll give them at least four gig. And like I said, I want to have at least a terabyte on each one. So we're gonna make these 500 gigabytes each. We're gonna have to add a CD-ROM drive. Tell we want Ubuntu 1804 on there. Yeah, I think that looks good. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and build these guys out, pause the video, and then uh, so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me build three, <laughs> three Ubuntu servers uh, all at the same time because that'll, that'll take a whole lot of time. So I'll go ahead and pause it and uh, we'll pause the music and we'll pause the video. We'll be right back. All right. So we're back. Uh, so that took a long time. I hate doing that. So there, there's got to be an easier way to uh, to install Ubuntu on a bunch of machines, and then fully update it a lot quicker than that. So maybe that'll be another video. Uh, for now, we got three machines: uh, Cast One, Cast Two, and Cast Three uh, that are going to be our Cassandra servers. Uh, so we'll go ahead, and uh, the first step is um, to install one server, get it all the way up and running. Uh, and then you you install Cassandra on your other servers one at a time and join them to the cluster. Uh, at least that's the way I've done it before, and it seemed to work out pretty well. So we'll go along with that that same thing. Now um, I already did a post on installing Cassandra a single monolithic server, uh, but this is kind of trying to mimic how we're going to do it in production. So um, we're going to do a few tweaks with Cassandra, make sure it's using the best uh, using memory the best uh, the best way. Uh, and uh, and some other things to make sure it runs well. So if it's th this, I want this to be a long-running Cassandra server, uh, so I can I can do some real some real big data stuff, uh, and and make some more articles and videos on how to do that. So let's uh, let's get to it. We got uh, we got our first one here. We're gonna we're gonna log into it. Uh, hopefully this this video won't, won't be too boring. Uh, but yeah, so we'll get to it. Uh, so I'll go ahead and log in here. All right, so here we go. Uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, turn off swap. Um, that's one of the, the big the big things if you want to uh, have a good running Cassandra server. So we're going to do the swap off dash A and go ahead and edit F stab. What you want to do is uh, comment that line out, the the swap image line. We don't we don't want that. So. All right. Uh, oh, let's uh, double check our space. So on here we got 461 gig. That that's awesome. So that's what we that's what we want. So we want a lot. So each one's going to have about 400 gig to use. Um, maybe a little bit less, but you multiply that out, and uh, and we got we got almost a terabyte 
of space available to us, which by definition, uh, big data, uh, of course, has a large volume of data. So we're going to try to fill up at least a terabyte or as much of a terabyte as we can. Granted, my website, um, uh, adventome.com, doesn't get much traffic yet, um, so the logs aren't necessarily going to do it. But hopefully we can pull in some Twitter stuff, uh, pull in some tweets, see, see who's talking about Admintome, and, uh, and, and pop, pump that into a table in Cassandra. And then, and then in a later video, we're going to do some, uh, see what we can do uh, with some machine learning and, and whatever to do, some big data analytics on it. See what kind of see what kind of stuff we can find out. How I can uh, make the blog better using big data. So, anyway, uh, here's our drive space. Uh, we disabled swap space. So let's go ahead and, and get everything. So I got I got it all fully updated. Uh, what we need to do now is install uh, install Java because uh, like everything Apache, it seems uh, you got to have Java installed. Right, so we're gonna install Java eight. Oh, oh, so if you're watching this video, be sure to check out my blog, uh, admintome.com. I'm going to have uh, an article which each, that outlines each one of these steps and how to get this done. So uh, if you miss these commands, because I'm, I'm going to probably go through it pretty quickly because it's going to take a while uh, to get all three of these guys up. But go ahead and check out my blog, admintome.com. Subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, I come out with at least uh, five articles a week on big data, Python, uh, sometimes some puppet articles and such uh, a lot of cloud articles DevOps uh, Also be sure to subscribe at the bottom uh, To my YouTube channel because uh, I'll be pumping out a lot more videos Because uh, I, I guess people don't like to read these days <laughs> So hopefully with videos we can get we can get some more uh, more viewers and, and more fans of my blog so, uh, Share the love on social media uh, specifically Facebook and uh, and, and Google Plus uh, apparently Google likes Google Plus if you want to rank up higher so uh, so all right so we're done with installing Java now um, we're gonna make sure we have Python installed so we'll go ahead and do that um, there's a part of Cassandra the uh, Cassandra SQL command line uh, uses it so we're gonna make sure it's installed and we have it okay so now now we need to go download the latest version of Cassandra uh, I have found out from my last box that these these guys these these things change a lot so we're gonna go we're gonna go browse to one of my favorite mirrors and see what version is there I'll pull that over so here we go uh, we have apache.class.org slash Cassandra and you see here's all the the versions that we need uh, so we're gonna go with the latest one we're gonna go with uh, 3.11.3 uh, let's see let's go with the bin so we're just going to uh, just gonna copy that link address and we'll move this guy back over so you don't have to look at it All right, and let's do a wget. So, and, and by the way, this video, I don't know if you're new to IT or what, but IT almost never does anything work the way it, it works. Um, works well the first time. So, uh, guaranteed, this video is gonna have stuff where I don't know something or something doesn't go right, but I wanted to record it all, so uh, maybe you can laugh at me because I didn't know it. or. You can you can get a good idea that that hey things aren't always gonna you're gonna have issues but hey that's why we have jobs in IT right because uh, if stuff worked all the time we wouldn't we wouldn't be working so anyway let's untar this and there we go and yeah, let's go ahead and move this into someplace better I like to put everything in user local. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, space would help. All right, so we're going to need to uh, create a Cassandra user and a, and a group. I think a group already exists, but uh, I, I don't know how. I guess it's part of the, uh, yeah, I have no idea. Uh, so now we have our Cassandra user. 
And of course it already exists. I, I don't know why. Maybe if you know if you know why that, that group already exists, please put a comment down there and let me know. Um, it, it would be helpful. I have no earthly idea why Cassandra user would exist already. So here we're going to add our Cassandra user to our group using the user mod, user mod command. Let's change some ownership around. Alright. Alright. So there we go. Uh, in my last blog, I, I told you to test permissions by, or in my last blog article about Cassandra, I told you to test permissions by by running Cassandra. Uh, we don't want to do that yet um, because we're going to make some tweaks to the Cassandra configuration um, because we're doing this clustered. Uh, if we started it now, it would it would give our cluster a name we don't want, and, and we have to go through and delete all of our data, and so that's screw that we're just gonna we're gonna, we're gonna wait to do that I, I, I've tested it before in other installations that this guy works so uh, we'll go ahead and continue with our installation so we need we're oh we're gonna run it as a system D service so uh, let's create a system D service de definition so it's gonna be Cassandra.service uh, we are we are gonna just straight up copy and paste this in here uh, and it looks like it didn't, didn't paste the way I wanted all right so we have our user Cassandra our group Cassandra we have starting at Cassandra and multi-user target and we're gonna wait for network online target so all right looks good So we're gonna reload the, the daemon. We're gonna enable this before I forget. There we go. Not gonna fire it up yet. We're we're gonna do some we're gonna do some configuration tuning. Uh, well, first we're gonna do some configuration. So uh, first, let's go, let's go ahead and and oh, so with Cassandra, we're gonna have our three servers. This server, Cast One, is going to be our, our seed server, or uh, I guess you could call it a bootstrap server. This is the one that, that all the other guys in this quote unquote rack and data center uh, are going to talk to. So in, in each, in each um, rack for Cassandra, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second, um, you're, you're, you want at least one seed. Um, if you have like three servers, you don't want all three servers being the seed, you want just one. Uh, these are going to be the contact points. This being the guy you talk to for that data center, so uh, in that rack. Uh, so we'll go ahead and let's let's go ahead and just configure this thing. Our configuration file is called Cassandra.yaml. All right. So the first thing we need to change is the listen underscore address. Oh, look, it's right there. Uh, right now it's set to localhost. We don't want that. We want to be able to access it from anywhere. So we're going to give this its IP. And I believe this IP is 47. So our next thing is, uh, is the RPC address. There we go. Our RPC address is right there. This we're going to change to the same IP. This is the I, this is the RPC address is what is used by the uh, Cassandra uh, SQL command line. Um, so we need to make sure we have this enabled so I can talk to it and, and be able to, to uh, control your you know, create tables and everything from another machine. Uh, so now we have that. Our, one of the last things in here is the C underscore providers. C provider. Okay, so there you go. It's called C provider. Uh, you'll notice here we have our seeds. We're gonna go to the end of that guy. Change that to our IP address. 
this this line is going to be the same for all three servers. The other two lines we talked about, the listen address and the RPC address, those are going to change based on what server you're on, whatever IP that is. Uh, since we only have one seat for the whole cluster, this line will be exactly the same on all three servers. Uh, I probably won't go through and, and in this video uh, show this configuration stuff because we, we don't want it to be too long. So we'll go ahead, write and save that, um, and now we're good to go. But uh, we need to do our performance tuning. So there's, there's some things that we need to do to make sure that Cassandra's going to run well on our server. Uh, so we need, to, we need to edit some stuff. We need to add a file uh, to our configuration. So I'll show you that now. Let's see. So it's security. Limits.d slash Cassandra.com. We're going to add in some lines here. Again, all this will be in my, my blog post. Be sure to check out my blog, admintone.com. Uh, I'll have a link to the article once it's ready in the bottom of the description there. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna set those four values. We're gonna save that. Next, we need to edit uh, our our sys control, virtual memory. It's a killer every time. So uh, we need to add a line at the bottom here. This number I just got from, uh, to be honest with you, another blog post. I don't know if it's if it's accurate, but they said send it to this and your Cassandra cluster will work fine. Uh, and and so I did. If if you know of a, a better way to calculate that, or if I find out later a better way to calculate that number, I'll I'll update the post uh, on my on my blog with how to calculate that number better, so that we can get the right uh, maximum memory uh, for the, for the Java processes. For now, I'm gonna paste that guy in. We've already disabled our, our swap space. We've got all that. Okay, so I think, I think. Oh, one more thing. Go back and dark the sander YAML. Cluster name. That's it. So I don't know why, but this bugs me. We don't want test cluster there. I want something a little bit more personalized. This is my admin tone cluster. Uh, we're gonna set this to the same on all of our clusters. Uh, apparently that's something I left out of my last, my last blog, so uh, blog post on Cassandra. All right, so I think we have everything up. Let's, let's see. Um, All right. Hey, hey! It looks like it's looks like it's going there. Let's follow the log and see. All right. So we created super user role Cassandra. Look, there's a lot of stuff in these logs and. It's going to take a, a minute or two while it goes through. So while it's while it's starting, if if you're still listening to this video and you like how I'm doing it, um, please uh, please like it and subscribe. Let me know in the comments so I can know to make more videos kind of like this. Uh, before it's just been. Uh, the videos I've made have been have been really short and been like, hey, you know, we're gonna install this today, so do this, 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 and this, and you're done. Rather than uh, kind of like you watching over my shoulder while I install. So, if you like it, let me know, uh, and and I'll be sure to make some more as I go through uh, my other posts on the blog. So, uh, let's open another tab. We we may be we may be good. So, uh, on here, I already have Cassandra installed somewhere, I believe. Ah. Yep, there we go. Cassandra. All right, and we're, we're gonna test this guy out. We're gonna go. Let's 
So CQLSH is our command line. Oh, yeah, it helps if I spell stuff correctly. All right, so hey, here we are. Uh, let's let's run uh, let's run a query. Uh oh, yeah, we want cluster underscore name. There we go. Hey, our first server is up. We got admin tome cluster and our address. So that's our that's our first server. Oh yeah, see, I should have I should have known to start along here. Let's think for secret clients on that. Awesome. So nothing looks nothing looks too bad right there. So let's quit out of that. Let's exit. Now let's go do the other servers. Join those guys in. Okay. Notice we got a fully updated box here. So I'll probably go through one of these guys on the video joining it to the cluster so we can see what that looks like. get this guy done so uh, so yeah hey while we're while we're here let's let's check something out actually I think we can go here so let's exit out of this let's do bin slash node tool status cast one dot admin .com. or admin tone dot lab Let's let's see what this says. If, uh, yeah, so we didn't we weren't able to connect. So let's let's actually connect to it. Uh, user local Sandra bin node tool status. All right, so hey, we see our we see our server. It's uh, it's up, and it's normal. It's our IP address, rack one. Oh, so we we yeah, I forgot about that. Um, let me show you. Sandra rack, Sandra dash rack PC. So this file. These are the these are the default data center and racks. So if you're going to be doing this in a different data center, you want to change the name of that to to what your data center is. Your rack. If, you have, if you're if you're installing these in multiple racks, you can update that. Uh, we'll just leave it because I forgot, and it really really doesn't matter in my lab. So uh, so, but the good news is, hey, we see one server. So let's go ahead and add our other server, and uh, we'll check back there. And we'll see that we uh, hopefully we'll have two nodes. Again, we're install Python, so all of that works. History rep, what we get? Because I am I'm a lazy admin. Awesome. 
We got all of our stuff there. Let's create our user again. it already exists. Yeah, I know, I don't, I don't, I'm just a creature of habit. I always forget stuff, so. You gotta follow the dog, just like when you're doing a production change, you gotta follow the steps. stuff done. Let's go ahead and create our our systemd service. Yeah. Cluster name here to match our other our other guy. It's our listen I address. Listen IP address. Yeah, we're gonna change this to this guy's IP. be the address of our first system. That's yeah, going to be the same again for all three. Oh, so hey, I almost forgot. We got to do our performance tuning. Uh, swap all dash A and an FS tab. Comment that one out. in our uh, four lines there. Okay. Set our maximum heap size. got to reboot to have this take effect but let's try this okay apparently it doesn't like spaces there there we go so now now I don't think we have to reboot we, we should be good uh, okay so I think we can I think we can start our we can start a cluster up a lot of stuff. Let's, uh, let's go back and check our check our node tool status. Oh look, so we have it says up and J means joining. 
you can see here. Uh, joining 48. Got that low token, bones, whatever. So we'll just check back. All right, we're up and we're normal. 48. So yeah. All right, so that's cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video again. Let's go ahead and pause the music, and uh, I'll go ahead and build that third server, join it, and then uh, we'll try creating a, a database table and and running a few queries to check out uh, check out our new cluster. So we're almost done. Let me go ahead and pause it, and we'll be right back. All right, so I got the third one up. It's uh, it's up and it's normal. 49 here. We got everything going. We're good to go. Uh, so back to our SQL thing. CQLSH. Let's go ahead and log back in. And we're going to run our, our same query we ran before, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and create a create a key space, and, and then we'll create a table that we're going to use for big data. Uh, so, and a, in case you don't know, a key space is is like a namespace for replication that states what kind of replication we're going to use. So uh, we're going to create an easy one here. Admin tone with replication replication equal to oops, right here that quotes class simple strategy replication factor got three nodes so we're gonna set this to three all right so now we have our key spaces Let's create a table. Look at there, people. We we now have a table in Cassandra replicated over three nodes uh, called logs, and and so the the way I envision this whole big data pipeline thing is I take my 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 access logs, my error logs, whatever logs, and that that log entry, that log line becomes the the log field here, the whole text line. Uh, when when we create the message that we're going to push to our pub sub, that's going to be that date time there. Uh, source is going to be the host name that we're getting the log from, and type is going to be uh, what type of log is it? Like uh, www underscore access for the access logs, www underscore error for the error logs. Uh, if we wanted to put any other kind of logs in there, we could you know arbitrarily call it any kind of type we want. So there we go. We got our table. We got our Cassandra cluster up. <laughs> In, uh, in production mode and uh, and yeah so here we go three nodes up and everything's good to go so that is it in a nutshell about 30 minutes it took us and of course I cut out the really long parts but uh, hope you enjoyed it if I missed anything or if there's something I could have done better please comment below if you like the video um, then, then please please click like down below and and click on subscribe so you can get some more of my videos uh, where I'm doing some more big data stuff. So uh, there should be a lot of those coming soon. Uh, I appreciate you watching. Be sure to check out my blog, edmontome.com. Sign up for the newsletter. And we'll see you in the next video.